is a grapevine that goes right over our house. It looks a little bit like we're living in a grapevine by this time of year. It was planted by the folks that built this house. So it's probably a good half century old and it's as thick as my waist now. It grows like mad and the most work we have really is to curb its enthusiasm. It really wants to take over. It wants to go all the way that way, climb over into the bamboo. It wants to go south over its nice arbor and then it starts to climb over onto the clothesline and we could easily build an arbor for it going across the south end of the house even further. What we really love about this design is that there's leaves coming out just in early spring. It's really pretty. By the time it's high summer, there's so many leaves, we're getting tons of shade from that hot west sun. It's functioning really beautifully with the course of the year here. The leaves start to fall in about a month around October and then we've got light again for the winter. The grapevine works really well as an air filter, which is really important today. We've got fires burning to the south of us and the smoke's all blown up. We do usually have forest fires in this part of the world. The grapevine gives us that little bit of an extra cushion. So it's a shade canopy, air filter, it cools the house down, but just when you want it to. In the mornings, all the ducks and chickens and geese run over to the arbor and pick up all the drops, all the windfalls. Last night, about three in the morning, up here there was a raccoon and her kits, two little kits, very sweet, eating the grapes. And I did growl at them and try to get them to leave. We, we do want to get some of this harvest and it's a bit slow this year because it's been quite cool. The birds do like the grapes. The blue jays in particular like to come and get the grapes. The leaves are a great yield. We can use them as a vegetable, as a domare. We ferment them and we use them for their tannin rich qualities in pickles, especially dill pickles, keeps things crisp. But the goats are the ones that consider them a real delicacy. And we use them to train the goats to the milk stand they just think they're candy and they like them when they're crinkly and brown and crunchy. They're like potato chips. We try to harvest as many as we can before things get all rainy and make them mush, but it doesn't matter if they do that too. We use them as mulch and they can go into the chicken run for part of their deep litter. That's actually just as important a yield as the fruit. Now the fruit, we like to turn it into grape jelly. What we discovered is that if we want to make raisins, instead of drying the whole raisin out, which takes a long, long time to get rid of all that juice, we freeze it instead. We pluck all those grapes. Then when we thaw them, they release all their juices and use that to make grape jelly. Uh, fruit wines mixed with other types of fruit. It's not a wine grape, it's a himrod. It's a table grape, seedless. So it's really nice for eating, it's lovely jelly, and then it's fantastic for raisins. They are like eating little flowers. So we'll pop those collapsed 
slightly already dehydrated fruit into our solar dryer and they dry a lot faster. This summer is looking pretty hot still in September. So we may be able to dry some grapes, but often what we do is dry them in March or April when there's really nothing in the solar dryer anyway. That's when we might get around to making raisins. However, we do have to do enough for chutney. We have to do enough for mincemeat. That's required. The grapevine is really self-sufficient. We don't actually need to think about watering it. We've got a downspout that stops by in its bed and we've also got grey water coming off the house. It goes across an old driveway and into four mulch beds and the mulch just filters out the laundry water, bath water, kitchen, dishwasher, that kind of thing and it filters out into the orchard. So I imagine that those roots go deep and that grape can get that water as well if it needs it. It probably likes the chickens hanging out around it, giving nitrogen. It really is almost completely self-sufficient. We really just have to work hard to get it to stop being so wild and crazy and prune it back. There is one more harvest we haven't yet tried, which we may this year, and that is verjus, green, green juice, a traditional, sometimes fermented juice from the green grapes, from the unripe grapes. It's a lemon replacer, and this is really an exciting prospect actually, because we just can't keep up with how much acidity we need in our food, particularly in our preserving. Actually, the grape can take care of a whole range of our preserving needs in that the juice from the grapes, the ripe grapes, can sweeten our calcium set jams. And then the sour grapes could provide that acidity that is the reason that it preserves it. We're not using a lot of sugar. We stopped using sugar a long time ago. We're always looking for different options, especially ones that we can produce ourselves. It's really nice to be able to sweeten naturally, but it's also amazing to think about not having to import all those lemons. We'll give this grapevine maybe some wood mulch chipped from the orchard prunings. That's about it as food production goes. I think this is such a great model for what food could be. It's perennial. We don't have to think about doing anything to it except a little bit of pruning. The work is all now in harvesting and the yields are multiple. They aren't just getting food. They're actually the shade and the air quality and the coolness in our house because of it and fodder for the animals. Even the flowers that come out in the spring are covered in the wild solitary bees and the honeybees from neighboring hives. Right about now the wasps are having a good time with it. Although having the chickens picking up the drops really does help with that. In this era of climate change, to have food that's this resilient, that doesn't need spraying, it doesn't need watering extra, it doesn't need fertilization except what the creatures here are already producing, it's incredibly self-sufficient, it doesn't need very much work, it's not damaging the soil, it's probably sinking a great deal of carbon given that it's been here 50 years, nothing gets dug up, the earth doesn't get exposed in order to do the cropping here. I would like to do more of these self-sufficient systems. I'd like to learn what else we can do that is really this, this easy with so many different yields that could handle a lot of the challenges that are ahead of us. Thank you.